true stories that make us say, Wow, God. Wow, God. Wow, God. I believe God gave me the start of a vision for my life. It was so out of the blue to me. There was a bigger, greater purpose that He created me for, but it didn't look anything like I had always dreamt it would be. Welcome to Wow God Stories. It's so wonderful to have you here today. Today's theme is provision. And you might hear stories that make you say, wow, God. My name is Ann Sorensen. I grew up in theater, was a theater director, and now teach film production, helping young people take the stories that are on their heart and translate them to the screen. And my name is Lisa Williams, and every day I spend time coaching on-air radio people. Um, I'm all about storytelling. I'm all about telling stories with impact and allowing your emotions to be present. So when Ann and I got together, we thought, how great. Can we talk about stories, learn how to tell your story, my story better in a way the whole world can hear how great God is, how good he is, how wonderful, how loving and kind, and how he provides, which is the theme for today's show. All the stories that we're gonna hear um, kind of have a thread through them about the provision of God. Lisa, I love this theme because hearing people's stories of provision helps me remember how God provided for me. And when I'm living life and have fears or insecurities about certain things, these stories help me remember that God who is good has provided and will continue to provide for me. Yep, in little ways, in big ways. Um, I, I remember when I was a brand new Christian and I was like 17 years old and I went to college and my roommate who became a best friend, Angie, she said to me, if you learn how to trust God in the small things, Lisa, then it's easy to trust him in the big things. So listening to these stories opens our eyes to trust God for provision in very small things today. And sometimes it's really big things. Like he has to provide peace or finances or a spouse or a job or a career or, you know, whatever it is. So yeah, let's listen today. This first story, okay, we're not going to tell you who it is. He's a friend of ours <laughs> and we'll talk more about him afterwards. Yes. But as we were looking for stories and asking people to tell our wow God stories, this particular person who we work very closely with he stepped up and said, I have a story on provision. I remember there was a lot of times in my life when I was worried about paying the bills, uh, the money coming in, dependent upon what job, when I was younger, working, like, is that check going to arrive on time? I think about all these times, stressed out, overdrafting. And even into married life, I can think of, you know, moments when we were you know, looking at the budget, trying to think, do we have enough for this month? Do we have enough uh, to buy groceries for our kids? Well, all without putting it on a credit card. And so many times, I know that God provided for us in unique ways. Sometimes it was somebody saying, hey, I feel like God asked me to bless you. But the bulk of that was just new opportunities, out of the blue moments, whether it was, you know, a small voiceover job on the side, which is something that I do, or an opportunity to uh, do a painting for somebody, which is another thing that I do. Looking back in those moments and looking kind of at my life now, it stands out to me that God's provision for my life is wrapped up in my calling, in an obedience to going in the direction that I believed that he was calling me into. I never really had a big vision for my life. Moments in my teen years weren't really filled with a lot of direction. I also didn't have a lot of ambition. I was not a great student. I did go off to community college and I tried out a semester, but even then, I didn't succeed. I had squandered that opportunity. I was showing up late to class and, and just skipping enough classes to where I literally failed by attendance. And I know that's the story for a lot of young people. You know, maybe it just took me a while to find my wings anyway. But I remember after, you know, I failed, I went home. I had to restart. A couple of years prior to this, I had given my life to the Lord. I was trying to maintain a serious faith at this time. So when I went back home, I really dove all in. I was really immersed in church life. I was on the worship team. I was helping out with youth group, helping out with the kid church area. I was even in a, a traveling Christian band at the time. 
Now, I remember being so concerned with trying to find out, God, why have you put me on this earth? What is my calling? What am I supposed to do? And in this season, I remember working a lot of different jobs, a lot of things. I was a waiter. I was a pizza delivery guy. And I ended up being a water delivery guy. You, know, you think that the two five-gallon uh, water jugs on both shoulders, walking into businesses, trading out, all those out. I did that, drove the truck and all that. Most exhausting job I've ever worked. And just making terrible money. And even when this was, it just, it just was not good money. But the one perk of this job was because it was so physically demanding, they would let us take a little longer lunch. We could take a nap and just kind of you know, relax a little bit. Because it was in the season that I was pursuing God intently, really trying to find my purpose. I would lay down and rest and sometimes I'd sleep and sometimes I'd be praying. And one day, I believe God gave me the start of a vision for my life. It was so out of the blue to me. It was a vision of these radio towers. And with that, I believed that he was calling me into a career of radio. That somehow I was going to be able to uh, be a part of his purposes. And Christian radio is really what I was feeling. And I felt like joy. And like it was a powerful moment for me. A, a moment like there was true belief around this. I end my lunch hour and I head back into this, you know, water delivery truck. And I remember I turned on Christian radio station, WBGL in Champaign. And a woman named Meredith Foster was talking about internship. Said, hey, we're looking for interns. If you, you know, you think you might have an interest in Christian radio, you should intern. And right then I knew, wow, this is for me. This is like totally paired with that, that thought and that vision I had. It was the first thing that, that played when I turned the vehicle on. And if that wasn't enough, which I felt like it was, my mentor at the time called me. He said, hey, I just was listening to WBGL and they were talking about interning. You should look into that. You should think about doing that. And I was like, dude, you're, you're completely right. Oh, and here's this whole uh, you know, vision uh, that I believe that, that God just gave me. And he was like, cool, man. I'm like, it, it is cool. Like, I don't think he thought it was as cool as, as I, I really thought it was. Cause like, I, you know, I had had this whole experience. Well, I believe so strongly that God was calling me into this career path that I didn't actually go to pursue that internship. I ended up going back to that community college to learn how to do radio. And after the two year associate's degree, then I went to go intern at WBGL. And at the end of that internship, I got a job, have been there ever since. You know, I've had opportunities you know, while working there to develop, uh, you know, freelance jobs. And so many times when those, uh, those moments of need and desperation came, I was able to take the skills that I learned there. And, and again, it just, it just seemed like, like God would put these opportunities in my lap, these opportunities of provision that, that seemed extravagant and generous. Like we have four kids. It's like, we'd have another kid <laughs> and there would always be a new a new job, a new opportunity to just add, you know, a new voiceover job, a new audio production thing or whatever. And I think a lot of it comes with the territory of trust and obedience. There were times that I felt like God was asking us to sacrificially give, you know, whether it was through child sponsorship or whatever, you know, and that's a thing that I think he really honors too. There's this verse, Proverbs nineteen seventeen. it says, whoever's kind to the poor lends to the Lord and he will reward them for what they've done. And again, I think back to those moments, hey, we, maybe we sponsor a child here and it's like God would open up the windows of heaven and just bless us. But again, when I think big picture, it comes back to that, that vision moment, that, that stepping in and walking in obedience, almost like God saying, this is why I made you. And he's been able to use those giftings and those callings as a vehicle for provision for me and my family. I had a small vision for my life. God had a big vision for my life. He is the provider. He's my provider. And now, you know, going back to the calling part of it, I feel like I'm starting to really realize more clarity about the calling itself because, you know, now I get to direct the Wow God Podcast Network. And it's hard to describe, but I even feel like that's the culmination of what God was showing me in that moment. I'm Jason Racco, and that is my Wow God story. I've been friends with Jason for a long time, and I just adored hearing him tell his story of provision. Anne and I work closely with him because, as he said, he's the director of the Wild God Podcast Network. 
I loved hearing how provision for him was so closely linked to calling. Like God gave him a calling, which he followed, and then God provided. Have you noticed that the calling theme keeps coming up on all our shows? Yeah. <laughs> it's super fascinating. Um, I've just been praying about it more and thinking about it more, praying for my sons more because of what we've been talking about, that they would know their calling and that it would be clear. And how the calling was slowly revealed. I mean, he had that moment when he saw the radio towers and then he followed that and then he heard the radio, the announcement, Meredith Foster's call on, on the radio for interns and how it just slowly unfolded. He followed and things were provided. He was provided for financially. Yeah, I'm just so digging this Wow God Stories podcast because <laughs> I'm just digging it, man, because I, I really love hearing the stories of, of people, real people. There may never be a movie made about Jason Racco's life, but this is a real person with a real story. And this is a really safe place to explore your true stories about the one true living God. So maybe you'll do what this next storyteller did. And you'll take that chance to come to wowgod.com and tell your true story, your wow God story with your own voice. We hope that you are blessed by listening to this podcast as much as we are blessed in creating it because these stories are taking root in our lives. And part of the joy is not only creating them for you, but just seeing how God is challenging us and he is gifting us through your stories. So thank you for sharing. Now imagine with us what it would feel like to have a child that you want to provide for and care for and give them the most wonderful experiences imaginable. But the opposite is true of your life and you feel alone and scared. I have a wild God story to share. In our hometown, there was a holiday gift giving program and one of the moms had slept in her vehicle with her child. And I'd heard about this and my heart was just so moved and I had a hundred dollar bill in my wallet and I thought, ah, I have everything I need, everything, everything I need. And I knew that where she worked and I went to her work and I said, are you a so-and-so? And she said, yeah. And I said, somebody had told me about your situation. I wanted to give you this and God bless you and Merry Christmas. And I handed it to her and she just wrapped her arms around me and gave me a big hug and couldn't even get the words out and said, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I said, God's going to take care of you and your and your kids. And I got home. And I was playing with my kids. And my heart started to pound out of the ch my chest. I felt the Holy Spirit say, I want you to call some of your friends. And I want you to challenge them to go up there and give them whatever they, they can, whatever cash they have, and go up to her and say, God bless you. Merry Christmas. And I did. And about eight different people that evening, before 10 p.m., before she got off her shift, went up there and gave her uh, money, gift cards, and a place to stay in a hotel for the night. And every one of them was so excited to be able to give in such a way. And God works when we really bless others. We're really, in turn, God blesses us tenfold. You just heard a wow God story, and who knows? Maybe it sparked your heart to do something because, and that's what happens um, when we hear these stories, when we share these stories, it's like a ripple effect where someone listening right now might be thinking, I'm going to go give money to somebody or I'm going to step out. So yeah, I love it when we tell our wild God stories because I feel like it creates more wild God stories. Absolutely, Lisa. I love that listening to stories can create more stories that haven't been written yet based on how we respond. I mean, this caller story challenges us to be the hands and feet of God so that we can provide for others like God calls us to do. For me, it always comes down to spending time with God. I think that so much of my Christian walk was about trying to do good. I gotta do good. I gotta tell people about God. I gotta do the right thing. I gotta be good, be sweet, go make fruit. But I found the more time I spend with God, putting my roots down deep into his presence, his word in worship, then moments like that just seem to happen. Do they happen? Or is it because we are in a place where we can see and hear them, where our hearts and our eyes are open to God leading? I can't find the words necessarily to describe what the experience is like when we bear fruit. 
I remember hearing Susie Larson say one time that we feast, he fights. And that helps me. That's the kind of energy that I feel when I bear fruit. It's like I'm sitting in the presence of God. And then all of a sudden out of my life, love, joy, peace, patience, provision for me and for others. It's mysterious and beautiful bearing fruit. And I just want to encourage myself and Anne and you that the real beauty of a wow God life is spending time with him, knowing him, as it says in Psalm 27, my heart says, seek his face, your face, Lord, I will seek. It's about seeking his face and then seeing what God does out of a surrendered life. And speaking of surrendered lives, your next wow God storyteller is definitely someone who has surrendered to the call of God on her life. Chrissy Kirkman is the executive director of Finding Balance and also the host of the old school Finding Freedom podcast. When it comes to filmmaking, Anne, how much do you talk about emotions? Is that a big deal in filmmaking? Not directly. In script writing, the goal is to show versus tell. I mean, if you were to read a book on script writing, you would read that show versus tell phrase more than possibly any other phrase in the book. The question that script writers ask themselves is how can you show how a person is feeling or thinking instead of telling the audience directly what that character is thinking or feeling? In film, everything that is internal needs to be externalized so that the audience can see and understand what is going on inside of that character. Showing emotion in an authentic way. Listen to Chrissy as she tells her story. She feels what she feels without apology. I I just think that that's a beautiful part of storytelling. Just feel what you feel, but keep telling the story. Don't stop. Don't apologize for being who you are or feeling what you feel. Sometimes you show the emotion by your tears or your laughter or the way your face looks. You'll hear it in Chrissy Kirkman's Wow God Story. God provided what her heart longed for. So it's the dream that I've had as long as I could remember um, just wanting to be a mom. And so when I was a little girl playing with dolls, babysitting kids, um, and then I grew up and started working at schools, I just loved being around kids. Um, You know, but often God's plans are much different than the pictures that we have in our head. After losing five babies, over the course of 12 years and then losing my ability to have children, I really just longed for God to use what I had been through for His glory. Knowing I had a calling on my life, there was a bigger, greater purpose that He created me for, but it didn't look anything like I had always dreamt it would be, like what I saw modeled around me, and I couldn't understand it. Um, I grieved with my church, I grieved with my parents, and their loss because I'm an only child and felt responsible for them not having like the family tree just stopped so I felt shame and felt like a failure and a disappointment that I couldn't give them grandchildren so I would just pour my heart out at the altar guttural deep belly cries like Lord, let this cup pass. And if not, I trust you. Your will be done because I know that you have something better for me. And you might be protecting me from something or you might have, you obviously have a bigger, different plan. And I am hurting and I don't understand. I really just longed for God to use what I had been through for His glory. And um, through that time, I struggled to understand my body's brokenness. Like, why, God, did I have to endure the chronic pain of endometriosis and PCOS and amenorrhea, hypothyroidism, and then I had vocal cord dysfunction and asthma and other illnesses. Um, And on top of that, I'm asking God, why did you allow me to endure a divorce that left me feeling alone and depressed and anxious and wondering who would even want me now? Well, a special man did fall in love with me and I remarried and became a bonus mom to my husband's son. And it was such a wonderful new role. Fun fact, even in our um, in our marriage vows, 
my bonus son and I took vows as mother and son of what we were going to bring to that relationship. And it was so meaningful. And my dad was able to marry, he's a pastor and he was able to um, talk us through those vows and marry us um, all together as a family. Um, So it was just really a dream come true. A few years later, um, while working at a Montessori school for nine months, nine months, super significant, totally wow God, a three-year-old little girl came into our lives and after nannying her for a summer, we asked if she could continue coming over on the weekends because she just felt like she was part of our family. And now she's 10 years old. We have helped raise her in the most wow God co-parenting scenario you could imagine. And, um, and I've had all kinds of experiences as a mom of a boy and a girl. <laughs> and, um, and it's just been such a wonderful, redemptive experience that I've walked with Jesus. And it reminds me that he doesn't always answer our prayers the way we think he should, or we hope he would, or we expect him to, but it's always exactly what we need. So if you're navigating a road of infertility or hopes and dreams, struggles in your marriage, singleness and wanting to be married, any of those dreams that you're longing for, continue trusting, laying those burdens at the feet of Jesus because he is there with you. He's walking with you in it. He's sitting with you in it and you don't have to get it together or figure out another way before you can come to him. He wants to meet you right where you are. And it is hard to sit in his waiting room, but it's always worth it. Chrissy brought us into the room with her. When she was sharing her story, I was right there with her. And I was able to experience her emotions of longing, fear, frustration, and sadness. But also, I was able to experience the blessing that God provided, not by what she wanted, but what she needed. Yeah, I found myself inside her story. That is a beautiful way of saying that. A great storyteller, suddenly you're in the story and you're thinking of your life while they're sharing about, you know, her vulnerability as she shared about her life. Suddenly I was feeling vulnerable thinking about my infertility or, you know, great losses that I've had. I'm grateful for Chrissy risking vulnerability and telling her story because when you show your emotions, there's always the risk of being judged for not being strong, for not having it all together. That's the risk. But the potential for someone listening to you tell the story to open up to God, to hope, to knowing they could make it through, I feel like the reward of being vulnerable outweighs the risk of being vulnerable. And I'm very, I am... I admire how Chrissy went there with her emotions. Also, in being vulnerable, it helps us realize that we are not alone, that our pains and struggles that we have are shared by others. We do not travel alone on this side of heaven. And what a comfort. Isn't that a comfort? It's good. So storytelling, sharing your story, um, being vulnerable, it can be comforting it can be inspiring. It could birth hope in a person who has felt hopeless. So yes, there is risk. And then I I just, I like the idea of us continuing on in this podcast journey and exploring the telling of a story, what makes a good story, how to tell a story, how to pick the content of your story. Because knowing that you have a story to tell, Anne and I, we really want to come alongside you in the weeks to come and explore how to define your story, how to find your story, how to start your story, how to end your story, because your story matters. And I think Chrissy was a good example of uh, discerning what part of her story she wanted to tell and then taking the time to tell it well. I really respect that. We look forward to hearing your stories and hearing how God provided for you. Oh, Lord, we thank you that you provide for us in ways that we don't expect or hope, but you provide in ways that we need. Thank you, Lord, for giving us stories that make us say, Wow, God. Wow, God. Wow, God. My wow, God story. I wanted to share a wow, God moment. That's my wow, God story. Praise God. And I'm so thankful to God for this wow, God moment. So, 
Thank you, God. (laughs) You've been listening to Wow God Stories, a Wow God production, a ministry of the University of Northwestern St. Paul. Discover more at wowgod.com.